In 2009, Pope Benedict XVI called for a new world financial order. In 2019, Pope Francis signed a major agreement with an Egyptian Muslim imam, and I believe this was in Abu Dhabi, to create greater ecumenical agreement with Islam, the Vatican's own creation. In September of 2022, Pope Francis was in Kazakhstan to talk about all kinds of world events and world issues with other main religious leaders, the main religious leaders of the world, including the main leaders of Islam and other man-made religions. And there's also an event that happened in 2020 that many of us did not probably remember about, but I would like to bring this about, about the Pope's of the Vatican's desire to have a new world order. And that's prophetic. In January of 2020, Cardinal Burke, who has since resigned in 2023, following various disagreements with his boss, Pope Francis, including the recognition of homosexual same-sex Roman Catholic unions in the Roman Catholic Church, Cardinal Burke spoke against that along with other Vatican prelates, high-ranking Vatican prelates, including Bishop Strickland, Archbishop Vigano, Cardinal Pell, who has since passed away, and now Cardinal Burke, Cardinal Raymond Burke, who, again, has spoken quite openly against Pope Francis, Jesuit Pope Francis. In this article that goes back again to January of 2020, the article is from Life Site News, and the title of the article is Cardinal Burke, Vatican's Global Pact for New Humanism Promotes One World Government, Opposes Christ's Kingship. So here we have Cardinal Burke. We have a picture of him, and this is the article from Life Site News. I'm going to read you portions or excerpts of the article. And it's not just Cardinal Burke that speaks against the uh, aspirations of Jesuit Pope Francis to create a bit of a new world order or new humanism for the whole world. There's other Roman Catholics who are totally against this. These Roman Catholics are perhaps opening their eyes to see the evils that are happening at the Vatican, including this aspiration or this dream to have a new world order, which again is biblical, as you will see. Part of the article says, from the beginning of the article, Cardinal Raymond Burke is calling on faithful Catholics to stand up and give witness to the truth of Jesus Christ's kingship in the face of the rise of Islam, which is again a creation of the Babylon Roman Catholic Church. When Augustine Friars identified Mo the pedophile as a potential leader and military leader for the Vatican to take control of Jerusalem on behalf of the Vatican. But as we all know, that failed miserably as Mo the pedophile went on his own way to promote his newfound religion called Islam. And if you look at Islam, if you look at some of their traits, it's, they're very similar to those of the Roman Catholic Church. I will list you a few of them in the video text description. Again, Cardinal Raymond Burke is calling on faithful Catholics to stand up and give witness to the truth of Jesus Christ's kingship in the face of the rise of Islam, as well as the Vatican's push for a global pact that will, in the words of Pope Francis, create a new humanism. That's another left-wing word or term that is basically identical to socialism. 
because as we all know, Pope Francis, who is a Jesuit, and Jesuits are very liberal, he is a strong proponent of socialism. He's saying, or he, at least he said to President Trump at the time, when he was building his wall at the southern U.S. border, Pope Francis was very critical of President Trump at the time, who was building a wall. He says that it's not Christian to put a wall at the southern U.S. border, while at the same time, the Vatican has huge walls around parts of the Vatican. The irony of it all. The article continues. The Cardinal uh, was asked by the Wanderer, which is a publication, I guess, a Vatican publication, in a wide-ranging range, interview published December 26, to comment on Pope Francis hosting an event at the Vatican in May 2020 with the theme Reinventing the Global Educational Alliance. Global. He was talking about a global pact. Now he's talking about reinventing the Global Educational Alliance. The article continues. The wonder asked the following question. In launching the initiative, the Pope said a global educational pact is needed to educate us in universal solidarity and a new humanism. More leftist socialist jargon. Just nonsense. What is the impetus behind this meeting and what is likely to be accomplished? As the wonderer is asking Cardinal Burke. Burke replied, it is, it sounds like an event to promote a one world government. All these things are connected with the spread of Islam, especially in Europe, but also in the United States. There is an effort to dull people's consciousness about the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ as it is proclaiming the gospel. Again, I don't agree with Roman Catholic prelates, but in this specific case, we have to admit Cardinal Burke is right. We have to be honest with ourselves. There is an effort to dull people's consciousness about the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ as it is proclaiming the gospel right here in the Bible. Christ is king. He's king of kings and Lord of lords. As mentioned in Revelation 19, he's faithful and true, the word of God. But there's an attempt by Jesuits, especially this Pope, Jesuit Pope Francis, to dull the people's consciousness about the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ as it is proclaiming the gospel. This is an area where the faithful must especially stand up and give witness to the truth. Roman Catholics are not exactly strong in proclaiming truth. They're not. Their version of the truth does not align with biblical truth. They uplift Mary. Some of them call her co-redemptrix, as I'm dealing with Roman Catholics on Facebook. Some of them are calling Mary co-redemptrix. That's against what the Bible says. They're also calling for Sunday rest and worship. That's against what the Bible says. So in this capacity, Mr. Burke is wrong. He is right, though, about the kingship of our Lord Jesus Christ, as is proclaimed in the Gospels. That's true. But Roman Catholics, sadly for them, a lot of them, a lot of them do not read the Bible. I have family members who are Roman Catholics. They don't read the Bible. I gave a Bible to my Roman Catholic parents back in 2013. The very next time that we met, they gave me the Bible back. They don't read the Bible because their version of the truth does not align with what the Bible says. So again, Mr. Burke, in speaking of truth, well, he's deceptive because his version of his Roman Catholic brand of truth does not align with what the Bible says. There's even a statement that was made by a Roman Catholic prelate, Mr. Mueller, who said that 
Roman Catholicism is independent of the Holy Scriptures. I will provide you with that quote in the video text description. It goes on to say that it was in September that Pope Francis announced that he'll be hosting in 2020 an initiative for a global pact to create a new humanism. Global pact on education, as it is called as well so as to hand on to younger generations a united and fraternal common home. Common home. Well, the Pope's brand of common home is also known as the common good, known as Roman Catholicism, which again is independent of what the Holy Scriptures say. The Babylon Roman Catholic Church is a religion on its own based on ancient babylon with sun worship doctrines that are not biblical the bible testifies of christ the roman catholic church testifies of itself with her false sun based worship system that is not of god it is not of god it is not of the bible the worship system that we are to follow is based solely on what the Bible says. We are to worship God in spirit and in truth. The Roman Catholic Church sees otherwise. They don't preach truth because their brand of Roman Catholicism, their brand of their own worship system is not aligned again with what the Bible says. Again, they will uplift Mary as a co-redemptrix. When the Bible says in Acts chapter 4, verses 10 and 12, that there is no other name under heaven through which we must be saved. And that name, according to Peter in those verses, is Jesus Christ. Not Mary, they're Roman Catholics. So the article continues here where the Pope speaks again about to create a new humanism. Pope Francis asserted the need to create an educational village in which all people, according to his Common Home Initiative or Common Good Initiative, common based on Roman Catholicism, which is non-biblical, all people according to their respective roles share the task of forming a network of open human relationship, relationships. Again, it's just more leftist socialist jargon just nonsense just big terms that mean nothing commenting on this matter there's a woman who is known as mother miriam foundress foundress of the religious community daughters of mary mother of israel's hope said on her september 16th 2019 podcast that such an educational village would once and for all once and for all destroy the family and the human race here you have another high-ranking roman catholic prelate this time a woman by the name of miriam who is the foundress of the Re roman catholic religious community called daughters of mary who said again in september of 2019 that this so-called educational village that pope francis is promoting well that would once and for all destroy the family and the human race so here we have a roman catholic prelate denouncing her boss jesuit pope francis she goes on to say instead of placing christ at at the center we place man at the center she's right instead of placing christ and his kingship pope francis is basically saying that we should place man at the center according to this woman by the name of miriam who again is the foundress of the religious community daughters of mary it goes on to say here in the article some of these words sound very nice she says and the demon appears as an angel of light Am I saying Pope Francis is demonic? No, she says, but yes, he is. Because he receives his power, seat, and great authority from Satan, the dragon. 
as per Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. So here we have the dragon who is Satan in Revelation 12, verse 9, who gives his power, seat, and authority to the beast. The beast is the Vatican, the first beast that rises out of the sea in Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 10, of which verse 2 is part of that describes how the dragon gives his power, seat, and authority to the beast, along with verses 17 and 18 of the same chapter. So altogether, Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 10, 17 and 18, describes or speaks about the Vatican. And again, verse 2 speaks about the dragon, who is Satan, who gives his power, seat, and great authority to the beast. The beast is the Vatican. And the article also talks about that agreement in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates between uh, Pope Francis and the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar in Abu Dhabi in February of 2019. So the religions are coming together at the request of the Vatican. So here we have this ecumenical desire from the Vatican to create this new world religious order. And then we had that big uh, conference in Kazakhstan, a Muslim country, albeit not exactly practicing Muslim nation, but it is still a Muslim nation in which Pope Francis went to during a visit in September of 2022 as part of a major ecumenical religious meeting with the world's major leaders of the world's major religions being there and you listen to pope francis speech of about 30 to 35 minutes not once did he mention the name of the lord jesus christ not once that was his opportunity for him to give glory to god but as always as a jesuit pope the pope that he is who is Antichrist, who speaks against Christ, and he does, well, he failed to mention and glorify the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua or Emmanuel, to an audience of world religious leaders in Kazakhstan in September of 2022. It's as if he's ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. And guess what, folks? He is. He is ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the popes of Rome, regardless who sits in the papal chair, they represent Antichrist. And this specific pope, Jesuit Pope Francis, he is a real doozy. This is the same clown who said that Muslims are our brothers, which goes again against 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 17, who said that atheists can go to heaven based on good works only. Forget about faith in Christ. No, forget about that. Just on good works alone. When faith in Christ is extremely important to have, as the saints of God keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ, Yeshua or Emmanuel, according to Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, in the King James Bible. But Pope Francis does not say that. This is the same Pope who stated that the cross of Christ was a failure, humanly speaking. Imagine that. That goes against 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. The cross of Christ is our victory. What Christ did on the cross, Mr. Pope, Mr. Jesuit Pope, is our victory over sin, death, and hell. You fraud. You should know better than that. Well, oh, that's right. You don't read the Bible. You go along with your man-made catechism. You're the same clown who says that the Sabbath is Jewish. It's not Jewish. The Sabbath was made for man. According to Christ's own words in Mark chapter 2, verse 27, he also stated that Christ may have sinned when he stayed behind in Jerusalem and spoke with the Jewish religious scholars rather than joining his parents when Christ was a teenager, rather than joining his parents. So then Pope Francis says, well, Christ may have sinned 
by making Joseph and Mary worry about the whereabouts of Christ. That's the clown that the Roman Catholic Church has to deal with. And there are a lot of them who are very upset, including Roman Catholic prelates like Bishop Strickland, Archbishop Vigano, Cardinal Pell, the late Cardinal Pell, and Cardinal Burke. High-ranking officials are upset at the Pope for what comes out of his filthy mouth, speaking all kinds of deceits. And then you have this woman, Miriam, who says that the Pope's language, by saying educational village, would once and for all destroy the family and the human race. She admits that. She's the head of a religious uh, Roman Catholic order called the Daughters of Mary. So here we have a fraud of a pope, and they're all frauds. They're all antichrists. You don't need popes. They're Roman Catholics. You need the Lord Jesus Christ only. This is the same pope who is being called Holy Father, if you can imagine that, when the one and only Holy Father is in heaven, as per Christ's own words in John chapter 17, verse 11. And Christ mentioned on nearly 20 occasions that the one and only Holy Father is in heaven. So here you have this Pope who is considered as Holy Father by his deceived followers, and that goes against what Christ says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 9. But the thing about the Vatican and its aspirations for a new world order, whether it be financial or political or religious, the thing about the Vatican is that it operates through secret societies, including the Jesuits, Satan's human minions on earth, Opus Dei, the Committee of 300, the Tavistock Group, and even the World Economic Forum, and one of the most horrendous and worthless organizations in the world, the United Nations, led by socialist Roman Catholic Antonio Gutierrez as United Nations Secretary General. All of these organizations that I've just mentioned, they are all mouthpieces of the Vatican. They speak to the world or being at the forefront speaking on behalf of the Vatican, while the Vatican, which is truly the satanic kingpin or the religious mafia that rules the world through Satan, sits in the background, quiet, observing the world's reaction. Again, these organizations are at the forefront, scheming plans for the Vatican on how to destroy the world spiritually politically and economically to demoralize humanity, to enforce humanism, and to put Christ out of the picture, as we saw in the article that we just read, with the likes of Yuval Harari, a homosexual Jewish little midget who is part of the World Economic Forum, and his boss is Klaus Schwab, and Mr. Yuval Harari from the World Economic Forum has alluded that Jesus Christ is fake news. In 1973, the world was divided into 10 kingdoms by the Club of Rome, which is a secret society of the Vatican. Adaptive model of the global world system, it calls. And this is what it says. The Club of Rome had its beginnings in April of 1968 when leaders from 10 different countries gathered in Rome. The organization claims to have the solutions for world peace and prosperity. This has been ongoing since 1968. It's not working. When the world is void of the Lord Jesus Christ, Emmanuel Yeshua, who is the Prince of Peace, who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, when the world is void of Lord Jesus Christ, when fallen Christianity is void of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
they'll be clamoring for prosperity and world peace even to this day. It's not existing. It's not happening because man is void of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mankind is void of the Lord Jesus Christ. Only a few remnant Christians have Christ in their minds and in their hearts. They follow Christ whithsoever he goeth. They follow Christ, God's end time saints. Revelation chapter 14, verses 4 and 5. So this clown of a secret society called the Club of Rome, a secret society of the Vatican, which is founded in Rome, where the Vatican is, where they're, they're looking for world peace and prosperity. It's not working out, is it, folks? The Club of Rome has been charged with the task of overseeing the regionalization and unification of the entire world. That sounds like a new world government or a one world government or a new world order, doesn't it? The club's findings and recommendations are published from time to time in special, highly confidential reports, which are sent to the power elite to be implemented. The findings of the Club of Rome, which is a secret society of the Vatican, send their findings and recommendations to the power elite to be implemented. You see how it works with the Vatican? They sit in the background. Yes, once in a while they will, they will flap their gums, but usually they sit in the background to allow their mouthpieces, including the Jesuits, Opus Dei, the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, and now the Club of Rome, which send their findings and recommendations on behalf of the, of the Vatican. They are sending their findings and recommendations for world unity, for world peace, for the unification of the entire world to the power elite to be implemented. On September 17th, 1973, the club released one such report entitled Regionalized and Adaptive Model of the Global World System. The document reveals that the club, that being the Club of Rome, has divided the world into 10 political slash economic regions, which it refers to as kingdoms. 10 kings because you have 10 kingdoms. 10 kings will lead their respective kingdoms, thus 10 kingdoms. Here's a map of this one world government or a new world order, according to the eyes of the Club of Rome, a secret society of the Vatican. Did you notice in the map, the world is dissected into 10 different entities. Kingdom number one, consisting of Canada with the United and States. Then you have Japan and China on its own. So China will have a heavy hand to control the world with the Vatican at the helm. These 10 kings are spoken of in Revelation chapter 17, verse 12, which says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. With the beast. Who is that beast? We identified the beast as the Vatican. In Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 to 10, along with verses 17 and 18 of the same chapter. Again, verse 2 of Revelation 13 says that the dragon, which is Satan, again in Revelation 12, verse 9, gives his power, authority, and his seat to the Vatican. The Vatican is under Satan's control, according to Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. And these ten horns which thou sawest, according to Revelation 17, verse 12, are ten kings, 
well, we talk about 10 kingdoms according to the statement or the report by the Club of Rome, that the Club of Rome has divided the world into 10 political or economic regions, which it refers to as kingdoms. Each kingdom has its own king. Thus, you will have 10 kings who will lead their respective kingdoms. Thus, 10 kingdoms. Again, Revelation 17 verse 12 says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast, the Vatican beast. Who is at the head of the Vatican beast? The Pope. The Pope is the ruler of the world, says a certain priest. Mr. Phelan, he said so in the Western Watchman in 1912. All the world's presidents, princes, and prime ministers, says the Pope, are as these altar boys of mine. The Pope is the ruler and the king of the world. It continues in Revelation chapter 17, verse 13. In speaking of the ten horns or ten kings, these have one mind. They have one mind. They agree with each other. They have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Those ten kings will unite with the Vatican papacy by giving to the Pope their power and strength so that the Pope will be eventually the world's one world ruler. It's coming. And these 10 kings, along with the beast, these, in, in verse 14 of Revelation 17, these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. Amen. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Amen. Christ will destroy the Vatican and its Pope, and the world system of the this world order, this new world order or new world government with the Pope as its ruler. It's going to be a very short-lived satanic new world government. Praise be to God. And Christ is going to miserably destroy these ten kings united with the beast, the Vatican's Pope. Amen to that. Christ will destroy the Babylon Roman Catholic Church and her Vatican in Revelation chapter 18, verses 8 and 9, as God will send fire to miserably destroy the Babylon Roman Catholic Church and her false New World Satanic Order. It's going to be destroyed. The Vatican will be destroyed. The Babylon Roman Catholic Church will be destroyed. Amen to that. And the heavens will rejoice at the miserable destruction of the Babylon Roman Catholic Church and her false system of worship in Revelation chapter 19, verses 1 to 4. Amen. Amen to that. Praise be to God. Bible prophecy is about to come to pass very soon when it comes to the destruction of the Babylon Roman Catholic Church and her false system of worship and the Vatican as well. Amen, amen, and amen nonstop, over and over again. Amen. So what we read in the article with the concerns of Cardinal Burke and this woman, Mother Miriam, well, their concerns are founded. Again, I don't agree at all with the Roman Catholic Church. It is Satan's church. You have to come out of her, dear Roman Catholics, and hopefully Mr. Cardinal Burke, Mr. Raymond Burke, will come out of her too, as per God's end time fourth angel's message in Revelation 18, verses 4 and 5. Again, as I've said before on multiple occasions in other videos come out 
of her, my people, says God, through his fourth angel's message in Revelation 18, verses 4 and 5, before the Babylon Roman Catholic Church and her demonic aspirations for a new world order, would it be financial or religious or political, and her false system of worship will get miserably destroyed by fire, by the almighty Christian God who rules the universe. Praise be to the most high God, Yah, the ancient of days who lives forever, who shall send his son, Yeshua, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, faithful and true, the word of God to destroy Satan's minions on earth and his aspiration for a new world order through his satanic pope. God wins at the end. Dear Roman Catholics, come out of her, my people. Come out of the Babylon Roman Catholic Church because her sins and her iniquities have reached unto heaven and God had remembered her iniquities in Revelation 18 verses 4 and 5. And then right after that, God will miserably destroy to ashes with fire the Babylon Roman Catholic Church. And the heavens will rejoice. Amen to that. Amen to that. So the worries and concerns of Cardinal Burke, who again has since resigned since June of 2023, along with this woman, Miriam, well, their concerns and worries are well-founded. And let's hope that the light of Christ will shine in Mr. Burke and in Miriam to come out of Babylon, out of the Babylon Roman Catholic Church. May the love, peace, and grace of the Most High God who lives forever and who is warning his followers of an upcoming New World Satanic Order with the Pope as its head and those ten kings be with you in these troubling, prophetic, and soon persecuting end times. So be it. Amen.